video, I'll discuss shaping your dough. If you've never shaped dough before, you might think that you just take your dough and roll it into a ball or roll it out into a tube to get a baguette. But shaping is actually a series of folds. And with each fold, you remove gas from the dough and you also fold the dough tighter and tighter and build strength in it, which will then help it stay upright when it goes in the oven. We shape dough for many different reasons. An obvious one is to give us different styles of bread, like a round loaf versus a long baguette. Shaping also removes the gas from the dough, and you then let your dough rise one last time before it goes in the oven. So this final rise is again, you know, more time for flavor to develop. Um, and you remove gas, but you also leave behind tiny little gas bubbles. So it's kind of like you take any big bubble that's in your dough and you know, remove most of it and, and disperse lots of little bubbles in its place. And the result of this is that after you bake your bread, you'll have a good internal structure with lots of different holes in it. If you shaping also enables you to make a tight outer layer on your loaf. And what this does is it slows down the rising and it helps your loaf rise in a controlled manner and rise evenly by having that nice even tightness all around it. In addition, um, you, you have this smooth outer layer. So if you, if you shape sloppily and you've got a seam showing or a weak spot, what you'll often notice is when your bread comes out of the oven, there's what I call a blowout, where one side of it just exploded outward. And that's because there was a weak spot there. And as your dough expanded, the gas was looking for the best place to go and it went toward that weak spot. So by having a nice, smooth, evenly tight surface on your dough, you help create just a better looking bread and a bread that rises nicely on all sides. So how do you know when your dough is ready to shape? Um, you wanna wait until it is fully risen. And by that, I mean, your dough shouldn't be springy anymore. Um, if you push on it with your fingers, you should leave a dent rather than having it spring back. You want it to be filled with gas all throughout it. Now, one caveat of this is that different kinds of dough are more or less tough. And so with a French dough made with yeast, it's often very easy to tell it's fully risen. You know, you give it a little push with your fingers and it dents and it's pretty obvious. But sometimes with a sourdough where the dough is tougher um, and it's more stretchy and you might push on it and, and the dent isn't that obvious. And I also like to tell people you know, if you push on anything hard enough, you can leave a dent. So you need to, you know, use a gentle yet forceful push. Um, you're not jabbing your finger into the dough and then saying, oh, I left a dent, must be ready. Um, when I'm shaping, I almost always start with a pre-shape. And a pre-shape is like a halfway point in shaping your dough um, that just makes it a bit easier. So for one thing, if you're starting with just this blob of dough, it's not symmetric, but you're trying to get a final shape that is symmetric. So by creating a symmetric pre-shape, you're kind of halfway there um, and it will make your final shaping easier. In addition, the pre-shape is just a chance to add more strength. So you tighten your dough into this pre-shape, then you let it relax, and then you go and shape it again. And you know, even if you're shaping around, it might seem strange that you pre-shape around, um, then let it relax and then shape it again into another round, but you're just stretching and stretching and that final shape will be able to rise more upright in the oven because of the added strength. So I'm going to cut my dough into two pieces and I'm going to shape one into a round ball and the other into a baguette. I'm gonna start by pre-shaping them both. So, so first I just sprinkle a little bit of flour down. You want enough that it doesn't stick, but you don't want too much because if you have too much, it just makes a mess. And as you try to shape the flour or the dough will just be sliding back and forth. So you kind of need a balance. Um, and then here is my dough that's been rising in this tub. So I'm just gonna loosen it from the sides. out. Use my bench scraper to cut it in half. And I'll put half
half over here out of the way. All right, so I'm pre-shaping a ball. So sorry, hands a little bit. First step is to smack the gas out of the dough. And it's, you know, a few smacks, but you're not killing it. You're not stretching it. Just a few firm smacks to get the gas out. Now this piece is kind of long and rectangular and I want it to end up round. So I'm going to, the basic idea is I, I want to fold up all the sides to make a nice smooth underside, but I'm going to have to fold a little bit more to make it round. So I fold those two sides and then I'm going to fold up this side and just kind of tuck and tuck under. There's um, two ways that you can sort of stretch the dough and tighten it. Um, and this is kind of the, the basic move of shaping is how I like to think of it. One is to use two hands and sort of stretch and tighten. Um, but the other is just to use one hand and to push on your dough and it sticks right here and that stretches over the top of it. So you use this pushing motion to stretch the dough. The secret to doing that right is to keep your hand on the table. I see a lot of people who just kind of mush the dough and roll it. Um, to use that stretching motion, you keep your hand on the table and push. And it, again, it catches right here and that stretches the top of it. Let me wipe my fingers before I touch my phone. There we go. I'm trying to look at this upside down. It's around. You usually want to cover it uh, while it's now going to relax for about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So um, you can do plastic wrap lightly over it, but sometimes that has a tendency to stick. What I often do is just put a little flour on the surface, move it, and then do something like this bowl upside down over the dough um, to stop it from drying out. So my second loaf, I said I was going to make a baguette. Um, and I'm not going to give a really detailed explanation of shaping this because I only have one and um, usually takes a few, but I just thought you, if you've never shaped a baguette, you might want to just see it to get some idea how it's done. So the pre-shape for a baguette is sort of a football shape. And the main thing to think about is we want it to be either even all the way across or a little fatter in the middle. We do not want a barbell shape because it's very hard to get a nice baguette out of that. So again, you take your dough, it looks a little sticky on top, so I'm just gonna flour my hands and give it a few smacks to get the gas out, but don't overdo it. For this one, instead of folding up all four sides to create a ball, I'm gonna do a little bit of rolling but if I just roll it straight up, it's going to be kind of long and thin. And that's not what we want. We want it about that long and football shaped. So I'm going to take the sides and kind of push them to the center a little bit. And then just gently roll. And that's it. And you could stop right there. Um, sometimes gas bubbles pop up and it's really hard not to pop them. Uh, you could tighten a little bit using that tucking motion or the pushing motion that I talked about before. But this length is good. And the more you push on it, the longer and longer it's going to get. So I would just stop right here. Um, again, I'll try to show you what it looks like from above. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone funny. There you go. So that's the shape you're going for. So I'm gonna let them just soften a little and relax, and then we'll shape them um, when they are, again, soft and stretchy. So while I wait for this to relax, I'll just mention a few things about shaping. Um, there's a lot to remember while you're shaping. With each motion you make, each fold or tuck, you're, um, you're building the strength of your shape so that um, when it eventually goes in the oven, it will poof upward and not just flatten out. Uh, after you shape, the dough is going to rise one more time and you want it to end up with all these little gas bubbles in it that then expand. 
if you don't get the gas out at this stage, you run the risk of having a big gas bubble in there that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when you bake your bread, you end up with one of those giant holes in it. So part of shaping is getting the gas out and subdividing all those bubbles that are in there into little bubbles so that the dough can rise one final time and have an even internal structure. And as with kneading, balance is needed when you're shaping. So I mentioned that you want to have enough flour down on the table that your dough just doesn't stick and get ruined, but you can't have too much or you won't have the, the stickiness and the friction you need and your dough will just be sliding back and forth. Um, you need to be assertive and you know use deliberate motions, but you don't want to be mutilating your dough and overhandling it. Okay, so I am going to take my reshaped ball and shape it into the final round. And this is going to look pretty similar to pre-shaping. Um, right now I have this nice smooth top surface, so I'm going to pick up this round and flip it on its head to preserve that top surface. Um, your bench scraper is pretty handy to pick it up and plop it on its head in some flour. And then, just like you did before, again, get the gas out. Now I have a pretty round, symmetric shape, so I'm just going to tuck up the four sides of it and then flip it over. And there's my round. It's pretty floppy, so now I'm going to start tightening it by tucking or using that that stretching motion. And so the idea here, and you can see I'm sliding a little bit, um, so I have maybe a teeny bit too much flour on the surface. The idea here is to get the tightest ball we can without the dough starting to rip. And so you keep pushing on it and stretching it and tucking it until it starts to rip, but stop right before it rips. So how do you know? Um, what I would recommend is one time, just keep pushing um, and keep tightening until it rips. And that way you'll be able to see how far you can go um, and know when it, when it is gonna start ripping. I was gonna demonstrate that, but I only have two loaves and I don't really want to <laughs> because I want to be able to show you um, how to score them at the oven without having them be all ripped. So I'm not gonna do that now, um, but I encourage you to try that. Just sh shape it so tightly that it starts ripping and then you'll know how far you can stretch it. Um, so I'm gonna stop here. So after you finish shaping your dough, you need to cover it and have it rise. You don't wanna put plastic wrap right over it, you know, tightly because it will stick to the plastic wrap. Um, so you want, you want it to be covered, but it's a little trickier than it was before because now you have this shape that you need to preserve. So you can't just stick the dough into a container. So there's a few different things you can do. Um, one I like to do is to use a large uh, container like this, but I flip it over. So you could um, put a sheet of parchment down or sprinkle some cornmeal put your dough on it and then use this as a cover so it's upside down, but that works. Um, I also often use my cake Tupperware, um, which is just perfect because, you know, it's got this nice cover on it. If you don't have a container like that, um, what you can do is take your cutting board and put your dough on it and then flip a bowl over it. And as far as what goes underneath the dough, so a lot of bakers use um, a linen, um, the professional ones are called couches, but you can just use any towel, as long as it's not a super fuzzy towel, but more of a woven linen towel. And the idea here is you put the towel down, sprinkle cornmeal on it, and then your dough goes on it to rise. 
Um, today I'm just going to do the, the simpler route, which is to use parchment paper. So you can buy it in a box like this. So gently pick it up and put it on the parchment paper. When it comes time to bake it, I'll be able to just pick up the parchment and put it into my pot in the oven. So I'm just going to let it rise just like this with this lovely bowl over the top of it to stop it from drying out. And I'll probably plug that little hole with a towel. So finally, I'm going to shape a French baguette. Um, and again, I'm sorry about my camera angles. Um, I hope you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. Um, I'll just, I only have one, so I'll just do it once to give you some idea. So I have my pre-shape and I'm gonna again flip it on its head. Smack the gas out just a little bit. And then it's basically a series of three folds. So this side is gonna come about two thirds of the way over. Then the far side is gonna come up and then there's a third one that brings it together. two and here's the third one. It brings one side all the way over to the other side. Okay, so this isn't the longest French baguette. Let me pick this up, show it to you. There you go. But I am going to let it rise on my cake Tupperware so I can't have it too long or it won't fit. But I can make it a little bit longer and I'm going to do that by first rolling it right side up so that the seam is on the very bottom. And then I'm going to use that two-handed tucking motion we talked about before to kind of tighten it. And as I do that, it sort of inevitably gets a little bit longer. Um, if you wanted it even longer, you can just roll it out just like you're making a snake out of clay. But I don't want mine any longer, so I'm just going to do that, that two-handed tuck. So there is my final baguette. Um, I'm going to let it rise in my cake Tupperware. I had to scrunch that end a little bit to fit it on, but um, we'll see you at the oven.